we should be at that five, five and a half million ounce uh, uh, range. And then we're looking at bringing on our shaft or mine sometime in that time frame of 2023, which should add another two and a half to three million ounces of silver. Puts us in that eight, nine million ounce range uh, as a mid-tier producer. So, you know, we may be up there with the, uh, you know, with the endeavors and the few more. We won't be a first majestic, but we'll be hot on their heels. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. And today I am happy to be joined by Kevin Drover of Arcana Silver, which is a company a lot of people in the audience have asked about. And obviously in a world where we don't really have a lot of silver companies out there, and especially Arcana about to go into production. So Kevin, appreciate you swinging by today and giving people who might not be familiar with what Arcana is doing yet, just a nice overview of uh, the company and, and what they're looking at there. Well, thanks, Chris. Great to be here again. Uh, well, you know, for the viewers, I think we're getting really excited uh, here now. Uh, I'm down at the mine site. Um, you know, we're getting ready to go into production uh, within a matter of weeks. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, commissioning the mill here in, uh, in the next four or five weeks. We should be putting ore through the mill. We should be filling our pockets with silver here uh, come August kind of thing. So, uh, you know, we're really excited. Uh, everybody is up. We're doing our development in the mine. Uh, the mill equipment is going in. So, uh, you know, come mid-June, we'll be commissioning the mill, getting it ready to uh, put over through in July. Uh, we should be producing uh, late July, early August, and we hope to be cash flow positive, uh, certainly in September. Uh, you know, uh, this is a great mine. It's a very high grade mine. Uh, we've got a very long life. We've got way uh, excellent uh, exploration upside potential here as we hope to be in business for quite a long time, certainly decades, not years. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, you know, near term production, if you like silver, and I think silver right now is having a very good run and I think it's got a lot further to go. Reading a report yesterday, I believe, from the World Bank uh, saying that, you know, silver requirement is going to double in the next uh, 20 years kind of thing. So which bodes well for us. So, uh, but, you know, that's, that's kind of the first take on this. Yeah, Kevin, uh, and it's interesting you mentioned that they would say it would double because what I'm just starting to grasp after years of doing this and, and perhaps would be helpful for people listening is that, and you can talk about how much production you're looking at because if, sil if, if the demand of silver doubles, still the amount that companies can increase, you, you can't double it. So can you put that all in context so people know how that all fits together? Well, you know, as you probably know, Chris, there's very few primary silver mines around. There's not that many. They're usually uh, uh, silver is a byproduct of uh, base metal mining kind of thing. Uh, so it's, it's not that easy to just go out and turn on and produce, you know, twice as much silver. And right now the world consumes about a billion ounces of silver a year, or this is what we produce. We're looking at, you know, two billion ounces of that in, in uh, sometime in the future. Uh, that's going to be difficult uh, to do, to bring that online. And with, you know, and, and that's to a large degree as a result of the renewable drive to, uh, to a greener future kind of thing. Uh, so it's, uh, it's going to be um, not a simple thing to do. It's going to be require a lot of capital. It's going to work, require exploration, uh, those kinds of things on a, on a go forward basis. So I think in the short term, now the short term being, uh, you know, five, 10 years or whatever that is, uh, you know, getting ourselves up to a point where we can produce enough silver to satisfy demand. Um, I think the price of silver is going to increase. Uh, because we cannot ramp up that quickly. So there's going to be a shortage of supply. I think so. And Kevin, what kind of production targets are you looking at initially? And uh, any, any other parts of the profile you can share with people? Well, you know, we're starting up at uh, an average rate of uh, producing uh, around 3.2 million ounces a year. But uh, we have a plan to get ourselves up to something much higher than that. That's all based on just us mining 270 tons per day. We have a mill that's available 
uh, and can produce up to 550 tons per day through the mill. So for every 100 tons that we can take the, pr the production through the mill up, it's about a million ounces of silver a year. So, you know, we're looking at starting up at that 270 uh, tons per day. Um, by the end of this year, we hope to bring a third stope online. We only need two stopes for the, uh, the, the, the three, and, three and a half million ounces a year. Uh, bring a third stope on. That's another uh, million ounces kind of thing. So starting in early 2022, we think we're going to be at around that four, four and a half million ounce production rate. By the end of 2022, beginning of 2023, uh, we should be at that five, five and a half million ounce uh, uh, range. And then we're looking at bringing on our shaft or mine sometime in that time frame of 2023, which should add another two and a half to three million ounces of silver. Puts us in that eight, nine million ounce range uh, as a mid-tier producer. So, you know, we may be up there with the, uh, you know, with the endeavors and a few more. We won't be a first majestic, but we'll be hot on their heels. Yeah, and certainly interesting to think what the price of silver might be in 2023. Although before we get there, Kevin, uh, obviously when we have an exploration company, Maybe they find something, maybe they don't. Then at the other end of the spectrum, we have companies that are in production. And obviously the risks as you go through those stages change. So what are the risks that shareholders would want to be aware of that, that you're watching out for that, you know, the things that want to be hedged and taken care of? Well, let me start with what are not the risks right now. We don't have permitting risk. We're fully permitted for production. We don't have construction risk. We're fully constructed in the mill. Uh, we're doing development in the mine. We have excellent uh, uh, support uh, with the uh, community behind us. The only real risk right now, and it's, and it's fading uh, very, very quickly, is execution risk. Um, we're gonna be in production within, uh, you know, within the, uh, six to eight weeks from today. Uh, so, you know, most of our execution is already, we've already done it, the, the equipment installation, our underground development, those kinds of things. So we're in pretty good shape. The silver price is, um, is a, the wind at our back right now. Our feasibility and all of our basic uh, numbers and economics were based on $18.50 silver. Silver today is trading at $28. Uh, it's a huge, huge uh, 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 bonus for us to have that kind of difference, you know, in our economics. And, uh, you know, our NPV at 18 and a half uh, uh, silver was 75 million. Our NPV at uh, $26 silver, it's about 178 million. Uh, really uh, a, a big deal. That silver price uh, means a lot going forward. So uh, we think we got, uh, you know, the, the price of silver at our back here, uh, and we've got some good times ahead where probably the only company that's this close to production in the silver space, certainly in the United States, for sure. Yeah, and Kevin, before we hit the record button, you were talking a little bit about some of the largest shareholders. I was asking, what was it that led them to invest their money? Could you yeah. talk about that a little bit? And uh, I think it'll help put in perspective, at least for people looking for that kind of profile, what attracted others to it? Yeah, well, Lascaux Resource Capital is the, uh, is the major shareholder in the company. I think they're holding something like 34% of the company. They've been invested in, uh, in um, uh, the Revenue Virginia's mine for, for some time, I think since probably 2014. Uh, they put a considerable amount of money in there. I think their initial investment was $25 million. Uh, once they took the project over from Fortune Minerals from the previous owner, um, they put up another, I believe, uh, $25 million uh, into this project. So they were great believers in, in, the, uh, in the silver space and in particular in this mine, mainly because the grade of this mine, the silver grade of this mine, is, it's, if it's not the highest grade in the world of, of a mine that has a proven and probable reserve, it's probably the second one. So we're 37 ounces per ton. Um, they, it's not a debt basis that they're in here. They own shares of the company. So they're an equity holder. They're a, a shareholder the same as I am and, and the, the others here. So they stand to make money by having this mine go into operation and be successful. 
So they've been uh, very, very supportive of the management team here. They're on the board of directors and they continue to be very supportive. And they're looking forward to, uh, you know, like all of us shareholders of uh, making some money. Yeah, and certainly having grade and uh, the leverage to silver in this current environment uh, does make sense. Kevin, while we're on that, can you walk us through the share structure so people know what they're looking at there? Yeah, well, we've got 275 million shares outstanding right now. Um, the float in the market. Um, uh, Lasca Resource Capital own about 80, I think it's 87 million of those uh, that are outstanding. We have 20, I think it's 28 or 30 funds uh, in us right now. Uh, so that's very, that's quite, that's quite good. Some funds are bigger than others, but institutional funds, we recently picked up a couple uh, out of the UK. So that uh, bodes very well for us. From a management perspective, I think we own somewhere around 5%. Uh, so that's uh, kind of where we are. We have 117 million uh, warrants outstanding. Uh, those warrants, most people are interested in the, you know, the length of those and the, the strike price. So about a third of them have about a one year to run uh, and they're struck at 37 and a half cents. Another third is uh, about two years to run and uh, 75 cent strike price. And the last uh, third is uh, struck at $1.25 and they have pretty close to three years to run. Well, right, that makes sense. And Kevin, just one last thing I wanted to bring up before, uh, if you have any other bullets, but I thought it was interesting that, especially with the stage you're at, you are, and some of your folks were mentioning, your expertise is in the construction and this particular phase of the project, which is always good to see a line. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, virtually most of the people that we've got here in the management team are, are from an operating background, construction operating background. So it's uh, not like this is the first rodeo. We've done this a number of times before in our careers, and I've certainly done it uh, a number of times. Uh, you know, it's important for us. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the, this, the, the single mine right now, uh, the revenue mine is getting it in production. I moved down here to oversee this on behalf of the board. So I'm sitting at the site as we speak. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's gone reasonably well. We started out this in December of getting it into production. Our target was for seven months to have it into production, nine months to cash flow positive. We're going to hit those numbers. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's a, a great achievement. Um, we had some headwinds when we first started out. We had COVID, you know, the, the vaccine wasn't out yet. We were going into winter. So we had those uh, uh, things that gave us a considerable amount of concern. And although we did have a bout of COVID, it never really set us back too, too much. Uh, the winter held us a little bit, you know, as it always did, the grip of old man winter. Uh, but uh, we've gotten through all of that. Um, you know, we've got our capital uh, materials are on site. We're putting them in place. There's really not much uh, to do. And, uh, you know, we're targeted now to, uh, to hit uh, ore through the mill in July. So I think we've, uh, we've met most of our uh, goals and objectives that we had when we started out in December here. Uh, so from an operating perspective, uh, you know, getting this thing up and running, uh, we know how to do that. Uh, so that's kind of the next challenge for us now. We're pretty much through all the construction phase. Uh, next thing is to ramp this thing up get it commissioned, ramp it up, get it in production, settle it down, and then start to increase our mining rate and get from that three and a half million ounces a year up to that six and a half million very quickly, as quickly as we can. Well, it's going to be fun to watch and follow along as you do that. And Kevin, perhaps uh, if there's anything else folks should know, and also how if they have questions, would like to get more information, how they can do that as well. Yeah, well, you know, I, th I think the thing here is that if you like silver, uh, you know, we're, we're heading into production here, uh, and I think we're a good play. We're in the United States. We're not a Mexico where the rule of law doesn't matter as much, I think. Uh, so, uh, and with the silver price where it is today, uh, I think we're in a really good place. All right. And uh, Kevin, how do they reach you with their questions? Can you give them the address for that? I can. It's kdrover at orcana, A-U-R-C-A-N-A dot com. 
All right. And the website, arcana.com. So Kevin, appreciate you stopping by. Uh, we do have a lot of people asking about Arcana and now they can get information right from the man running the project. So right thanks again. And uh, we'll look forward to checking in soon and see you in production in a couple of months. Okay. Thanks, Chris. You take care.